All right, guys, good morning. Welcome back to the channel. My name is High Ruler, and today we have the weekly developer update, kind of early compared to the last couple of weeks, so it's always nice to see. And today's update, we're going to see exactly what they're going to be breaking down for us. In the background, you're going to see this guy. He's going to be making some noise probably. He's, uh, he's on one the last couple of days, so hopefully he's not too distracting all right they say hello people in metropolis yesterday we launched another patch for the game aimed at fixing a variety of bugs and making improvements to the season one play based on player feedback we wanted to reiterate some of the biggest changes that came with the patch as well as provide some context on the reasoning behind their inclusion as the main topic of discussion for this week is the patch this will be a shorter developer update as most of the necessary information is contained within the patch notes We'll be keeping a close eye on the feedback, so let us know your thoughts on the changes we have introduced and keep those bug reports coming. This week's patch. There were several improvements made in this week's patch, which are covered in detail in the patch notes. A few of the biggest changes that we wanted to provide additional context on are as follows. Battle Pass XP doubled from most sources. Now, this was a big one without even breaking down what they're about to talk about. The Battle Pass XP was nothing, right? Like that was a slog to get through. And we've seen nowadays that with your Battle Pass in many different games, you're able to just kind of complete it when you can, right? Like it seems like no matter what game, sources of XP are plentiful and the XP you're getting is also plentiful, which means you're able to just play the game and complete it within a decent amount of time. The Suicide Squad one prior to the last patch was downright pitiful with what they were giving you so obviously it's good that they took all that feedback in i had said that they probably wouldn't be happening until episode two i was wrong so it's nice to see that they made that change very quickly they go on to say that we have doubled the amount of battle pass xp gain from missions and cargo knots and hope that players will be able to get to the awesome rewards sooner we'll be keeping an eye on player progression through the battle pass tiers with the new numbers in case further change is required as a reminder missions and cargo knots are not the only source of battle pass xp you can also get a nice chunk of Battle Pass XP every day by ranking up and collecting up your care packages. In addition to that, you can also complete daily contracts that will help you progress through the Battle Pass much quicker. Lastly, Battle Passes and Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League do not expire after the season is over, so you can progress through at your own pace and revisit them whenever you like. Now, I feel like they were hinging on that part to kind of make sure that whatever they gave us in terms of the um, frequency that you're able to get a Battle Pass level would be okay, because a lot of the time, a lot of these Battle Passes do have a bit of FOMO to them, right? Which means that you do want to level it up and complete it as quickly as you can, which is probably why a lot of them make sure they're able to kind of complete it super quick, right? I think Fortnite is a big one there where Jay Shockglass has told me numerous amount of times that he's actually able to complete that battle pass super quickly right now rock city and suicide squad were probably thinking okay we can make this a little bit of a longer grind we can kind of keep people within the game and since it's not really going anywhere there shouldn't be an issue well people want to feel like they're able to progress through at a decent pace right regardless of if something's going away or not i think obviously people want to make sure that if they log on and they play a bunch of your game they're getting something out of it right out of that battle pass and it didn't seem like before this patch that was happening so I can kind of see where Rocksteady probably was thinking about it and what they were trying to do. But then also, you know, you got to also keep in mind that players just want to feel that progression. They want to see that progression, right? And getting a couple of levels and having mostly that be voice lines still isn't as good of a feeling as it is to get a skin or any sort of other visual kind of um, reward, you know? So once again, that feedback with the battle pass is you got to take all those audio lines out hundred percent. You got to take all that shit out and replace it with stuff that people care about, right? Because if they go through a level and they get a one level, right? Just one level, but it's something that's cool looking and something that they're able to kind of see whether it's a weapon skin or whether that's a charm on their weapon or whether that's a banner or whether that's a skin, that's cool looking, right? That makes people feel like it was worthwhile getting one level and having an audio line that's not worth it for a lot of people it's not worth it for me so definitely some feedback there in terms of their battle pass um they gotta they gotta tidy that up for the next one reworked craze immunity mutator we have reworked this mutator to no longer make enemies immune to venom frenzy but simply debuff the power of venom frenzy in episode one this is a quick change we can make to allow players to use bane gear in episode one while we take a deeper look at the role of mutators in end game play which we hope to talk more about soon. Now, this is an interesting one because 
when we talk about mutators, mutators are a phenomenal idea. Like, don't get me wrong. The addition of mutators in your end game to kind of keep things a little fresh, a little different, is a very cool idea. The problem is when those mutators just suck, right? Now, whether that was boom last season or whether that's the Venom stuff this season to kind of make people feel like their grind isn't being respected, these things just need to be looked at across the board in terms of what they're doing with these, right? With Boom, it was the fact that these enemies would just go and explode when you had to shield harvest them, right? Like, And if you're not far away enough, they're going to explode all over and there's so many enemies and you just kind of die and it's just, it wasn't fun, right? Like everything to do with Boom just wasn't fun. This one with the Venom Frenzy, we did all this grinding for all this gear in episode zero, right? In season zero. And we get to season one and none of that is worthwhile anymore. All that is tossed at the window, right? That doesn't feel good as a player, right? Because you put all that time in, you get the build and you go in there and you're like, well, none of this is going to fucking work. So why do I even bother, right? Because then probably what would have happened is that for the next set of gear, our current set of gear wouldn't have worked, right? So you're always throwing out the old and replacing it with the new, right? Spring cleaning every episode. And in some ways, I understand, right? Because they want you to play with the new stuff, right? But I said before that we have to do is give a positive incentive to switch up the gear, right? To make someone want to use the new stuff. What they're doing is giving a negative incentive. So even if it is, you know, these new gear have 200% uh, bonus damage or whatever, right? Like do new cool things in order to make people switch up their builds, right? If they want to. If they don't want to, that's on them, right? Let them play with the stuff they have. But if they decide like, oh, this stuff has a cool little bonus here and I want to try that bonus out, or this has a new interaction with this, let's try that out, right? There's ways to make this more positive in terms of the new gear, but what they were doing is it was just all negative, right? Like, oh, you did all this? Well, it's not going to work anymore. No one wants that, right? Give them a bonus, positive reinforcement, and positive incentive rather than just kind of throwing everything away and just not having anything to use, right? It's just the role of mutators are good, and I like that Rocksteady is exploring this. The ones that they've picked and designed, uh, there's a lot there to be said. So let's see what they come back with soon. Raising Hell Fix. We are aware that a number of players have been experiencing an issue whereby their Raising Hell playlist is not correctly completing, despite them having completed the necessary criteria. We have implemented a back-end fix that will fix this issue for most players in the short term while we work on implementing a more permanent fix in the near future. Black screen fixes. We have fixed a number of bugs that were causing players to be presented with a black screen when loading into the game. We know a few players were experiencing this issue and believe it should now be largely resolved and we'll keep an eye out for any further instances of this. It's unfortunate that they didn't really talk about the Joker stuff. I mean, I don't know how many of you guys out there are still experiencing the Joker model not loading. I personally am. It's pretty disappointing. Um, let me know in the comments below if you're still experiencing the Joker model not loading because... I would like that to be fixed so I can play the Joker, but, you know, I guess we will have to wait and see. And then at the end here, we have a little Lejeune build for the Joker. I can't believe this guy gets to play the Joker, and I don't. Unbelievable. No, I'm just kidding. Love Lejeune. Love you, buddy. Great to see you kind of featured here on the blog, man. And that is it for the weekly developer update today guys like they said kind of a shorter one but definitely kind of going into the details here all in all i've heard pretty good positive feedback regarding the patch yesterday so if you're looking to jump back in and try out a lot of the stuff go for it the patch does seem to be a positive one from the people i've talked to from some of the reception i've seen on reddit so go for it have fun Otherwise, if you guys want more Suicide Squad coverage, make sure you subscribe to the channel, like the video, leave a nice little comment, and hopefully we just get some new stuff to talk about soon, man. It's always one of those things where we're in the kind of the middle of the first episode of the first season, and everyone's kind of done what they've done so far, so it's kind of a, a lull, you know, as we wait to kind of get them geared up for episode two. So let me know what kind of content you guys want to see out of the game, you know? Is it, you know, kind of the weekly stuff where I talk about some of the new skins come to the store, and even though you know that's a whole other topic of conversation because what they're adding to the store doesn't really seem visually appealing the choices they're making are questionable at best and it just seems like there there's a lot to talk about with this game but a lot of the time a lot of that stuff i could talk about feels like i'm just dogging on rocksteady you know what i mean so but let me know what kind of content you guys want out of this game and otherwise i will see you guys next time here on the channel if you guys enjoyed this 
please make sure you subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you guys next time. As always, enjoy the rest of the day and night. Take care, take care of yourselves. Later, guys.